Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan Ringer and today I'm going to be talking about using CMake with Nix, um, a user on Reddit, so that they would really like to see this particular library to be packaged and uh, it does use CMake here. Um, and so then today I'm just going to go through um, how like I approach packaging CMake packages as well as what you would normally need to reflect in the Nix code to be able to package such a um, a library and so then let me just kind of explain the problem domain here uh, this is a C plus uh, C library uh, that's written in C99 and uh, it should be a relatively simple build the only dependencies that it really has is embed TLS uh, for I believe it's mutual TLS um, and then uh, that's about it for the dependencies um, and then it has very simple uh, configuration flags, um, which is uh, also there's a, a HAL component to this, um, and a few other things. But um, first, if you're not super familiar with the CMake, uh, how CMake works is that it's going to be looking for a CMake list.txt in the current directory. Um, However, that's if you're going to do an entry build, as in like CMake is building at the same level as everything else. Uh, one of the recommended uses of CMake is actually to create a build directory and then do something uh, where you do CMake uh, dot dot. So this is actually what they describe here. And kind of what this does is that you have a separate manifested CMake directory that's external from the sources. So then the sources kind of exist outside of the kind of generated files and then uh, it's able to do all of the intermediate objects inside of that build directory uh, then it can do all the linking steps inside of there uh, without really uh, pot or like polluting your source code with a bunch of like dot o's and dot i's or whatever uh, you use for your c workflows okay uh, and then a few other things too is that they do have tests which is great they have some documentations as well um, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, the other thing that I usually like to do before I start writing some Nix for a project is, uh, and this is especially true for uh, CMake, is to just kind of see uh, where they are in the CMake, what's the word, paradigms, I guess would be the best term. Um, but there's a few ways that people can leverage CMake. So the old way is to have these global strings. Uh, and unfortunately, that is what is going on here. So this is exemplified uh, by usage like include directories. Uh, you just have this global context where there's going to be like a CMake underscore include directories being created with all this information. Um, this is actually not CMake best practice for modern CMake. Uh, the best practice today is actually uh, using targets, so uh, include directories, something like this. So then if we find the documentation on CMake, uh, what you really want to do is this target system um, and just brief explanation of targets, but uh, targets are something that you kind of compile or use uh, and they kind of represent a node in a build graph. And so then when you are kind of building up the dependency tree and everything that you really want to kind of create, uh, the target system allows you to have nodes inside of the uh, tree and then you kind of can then have targets reference other targets. Uh, the reason why the scale is better though is that if you want certain C flags to be expressed in targets or for them to like either be installed or not installed, um, it's much easier to do that at the gran granularity where all of those target specific configuration is wrapped up into the target itself instead of having this like global string like complicated string uh, logic where then you're maybe applying some flags here and maybe not there it's just it's a better way to organize uh, your dependency graph so that's the first thing that really pops out to me is that it's probably uh, going to be a code smell is probably the best way to say that. So s similar to how programming languages can have code smells that like if they do this, then they're likely to also have poor things elsewhere. That is, that's one thing for me. Um, and so then 
Also here too, file glob is also not recommended because uh, that is done before it generates the make file. So it will execute this on the CMake configure and then if you say add another C library, I mean this is okay because it's in a dependency tree and this shouldn't be affected on a develop itera uh, development iteration, but it's still one of those things where it, this is actually not recommended to do. Um, also, the fact that they're reaching into a dependency is kind of a smell as well, because if we go in and we um, bit, uh, build embed, uh, embed TLS, actually, let's see here. Uh, we should be able to see if they have a .pc file or a cmake. Okay, so maybe embed's not the, the best example for this, but a lot of libraries, when you build them, they will have uh, already some metadata about them. So, for example, if we were to build OpenSSL, then um, if we were to build OpenSSL, and then inside of here, there should be a .pc. Yeah, so... Uh, if we open up this, then like this will already tell you kind of where the include directory already is. And so then at build time, it's really easy for uh, CMake. And CMake does have integration with this. If uh, we do CMake package config. Um, but yeah, like CMake already has a module for package config, and so then you can leverage package config to find certain other things. Okay, so that's not super relevant in this situation, but I just wanted to throw that out there, is that generally uh, this target model also applies to finding dependencies and then supporting them as well, uh, and that is, that's just one thing, you know, like the code smell. So... Uh, anything else? Uh, the other thing too is how they do installation. So here, I don't think it's at this level because they also do includes. So uh, include or was it add sub? Yeah. So build examples. Yeah, so they have a add subdirector here. Add subdirectory means that you go to that lower level, so they go into source. And then inside of source, they have another CMake list. And in here, I think, is where they have the install. Yeah, so you install, and then they build up the targets. And so then they install the bin and lib, which is fine. Uh, I believe this is okay. I don't, I don't, I don't remember on best practices anymore for install. Uh, the other thing too that I will kind of relax on a lot of people for CMake is that it's really hard to find no uh, find best practices. The the only kind of canonical source that I could find is this book, which is uh, Professional CMake: A Practical Guide. Um, it does cost thirty dollars, but it gets updated constantly. So uh, I would no, it gets it's a one time purchase, but then all updates you get. I. I it's the only thing that I found where the the guy who writes it is an active co-maintainer, if I remember correctly, if CMake. And he stays relatively up to date with the best practices and development of CMake. And so then each time uh, you kind of want to revisit something to see whether or not you're either cargo culting, uh, like doing something that's inefficient or are obsolete, or if you are actually abiding by best practices, um, this book will usually have a... a opinionated outlook on a particular usage case. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, yeah, so what I get though from reading through all this is that it's likely to not be the greatest, although they do use target link libraries down here, but it's, it is it is odd though that they use a combination of um, both the include directories uh, string, uh, global string context, as well as some of the target. So that's, it's, it's just one of those, uh, like I said earlier, it's just, it's a smell, but 
that used to be the practice and so although it's good to see that they do have some target link libraries going on okay um the other thing that was concerning for me as well is that their star count is okay but their issue prioritization is also kind of lacking here as well um like for example having that explicit dependency path here where it's like dependencies and then like this embed tls version down to the patch file that's also kind of concerning for me as well that they have it down to the patch level like what happens if this has a security vulnerability uh and then like it was fixed in dot 13 like you you shouldn't be pinning it to a patch version you should really be allowing it so that anything that's of a compatible api and abi are able to be substituted um, that is one thing that the find package has is that uh, you can specify version ranges in here uh, okay well longer version anyway you can specify a version range and then you can do some insertion about the version range um, yeah okay whatever moving on to packaging this though okay so what this will look like in Nix is uh, we will do something what, what would this be listed under this is a implementation for some protocol serial link layer so it looks like a networking library so what I would want to do here is go into here um, packages pages test And then kind of want to see if there's anything like uh, networking tools, networking. No, I don't want tools. Um, I'm just going to go with develop since this is a library which is also supposed to be consumed. So I'm going to go with something in a matter of oh, let's look in miscellaneous. No. Okay, so development and then libraries, I think is probably the best case for this. Okay. Um, so then let's uh, generate the initial uh, expression, text template, standard env. Uh, let's pull this from here. name can be there okay but then we want to add the path of development libraries okay so if we open this up um Next template was able to generate this for me. That looks relatively good for initial pass. Uh, the two things that we do need to add though are gonna be CMake and then embed TLS. Um, and of course to find these, I always like to do the Nix REPL. So open up Nix REPL and inside of Nix package directory, load up Nix packages. Um, and then just to ensure that you're importing the right things, you can always do this. Okay, so we have, uh, what is this version? So 2.26, and then this wants, what again? Two dot sixteen. Okay, so uh, whatever. Uh, we can just unpack it at that, that level to see whether or not it compiles, but that's, that's more or less an issue for upstream. Um, oh, right. What I was supposed to mention earlier was that the other concerning thing for me as well is that a lot of these bug fixes uh, are kind of very stale. Like this was opened up in August of last year. Uh, time of recording is going to be almost the end of January. So this has been open for almost six months. No one's commented. Um, it just seems really stale. And my concern is that it's going to be uh, kind of almost like abandoned wear. 
So that that's one other thing too, just at a high level. When you're inspecting whether or not, and this is this is just choosing dependencies for development in general, uh, is that you anytime you take on a dependency into your project, you're kind of inheriting all of their security uh, scope as well as all of their um, complexities and breakages uh, will kind of percolate up to you, and that's that's just one of the things. If your upstream is not super responsive, then it's it's a good indication that you should probably avoid this dependency altogether. But this is a demonstration on how to use CMake, not necessarily like how to vet dependency choice. So, okay, so we'll do embed TLS. Uh, how we leverage CMake is going to be native build inputs. The next question is going to be, what's the difference between native build inputs and build inputs? And my quick answer is just going to be that native build inputs are meant to be executed during the build. Um, and then build inputs are usually like libraries, something that you're going to link on. Um, this doesn't really come into too much of a consideration for if I build on the x86-64 Linux machine and I'm targeting x86-64 uh, Linux machine. And then the, the different doesn't, difference doesn't really matter. Where this really comes into play is uh, cross-platform building. So stuff in native build inputs is going to be inherited from the uh, the build platform. So the platform that you're building on. So let's say if I have a really powerful x86-64 Linux machine, but I want to build something for an Arch64 Linux machine, then I want the stuff that can run on x86 on x to be in native build inputs, but then I want uh, the build inputs to inherit from Arch64. So the, the things that get linked are Arch64 compatible, so like for Raspberry Pi, whereas the native build inputs can run on x86. Um, if and, and it's just best practice. So you, I could put CMake into build inputs, uh, and it'll, and it'll probably build fine for me. But it's just best practice to to have that differentiation. Uh, differentiation. Ooh, okay, so we'll have that in there. Um, build inputs, uh, this actually doesn't matter. So normally you would want to put something like embedded TLS in there because that is a TLS library or a TLS implementation. However, um, because they have that CMake logic, it doesn't get consumed like it should. So if they did use something like find package, then embed TLS uh, as a build input would make a lot more sense. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to just save out of that. Um, and then I want this, let's put this in uh, all packages real quick and then I can demonstrate my point. But um, the Jesus, these are all terrible. Whatever, let's just do it here. Even though it doesn't make no, that, that makes way too little sense. Um, sure. So lib. Oh my God, what was this called? Oh, it's right there. Lib six zero eight seven zero. Equals uh, call package like that. Okay. Uh, what I just did there though is now if I were to reload this, there should be one more. Yep, there's one more thing that's added. And so then now if we do uh, now it's been added. Up little packages. Oh, right. I forgot to do the the dot dot. Okay, environment full. Okay, so this evaluates the derivation now. Um, the reason why I wanted to do that though is to show you that if I did uh, nix shell default dot nix a lib six zero eight seven, um, that if I were to look 
Um, CMake has an extra shell hook, which gets executed uh, when you add it as a native build input. And so then these things will be populated. So here you can see the CMake include path now already includes that embed TLS. Um, and what I mean by shell hook is that um, build managers setup hook. Here we go. Um, but CMake will add this shell hook for uh, anytime that you include the CMake package. Let me. does it get yeah okay so here here we go so the setup hook uh, if a derivation has a setup hook then anytime it gets introduced into environment it will also run this uh, shell script and so then if I go back to the actual setup hook uh, one of the things that it does is um, let me look at include so this make f see make fine libs will get executed as well and Essentially, it's just Nix aware. So it will it will go through all my build inputs and it will check to see whether or not it exposes input uh, include and libraries, and then it will populate those uh, variables accordingly. So uh, the reason why this is really nice, though, is that if a package were to use something like the CMake find package um, utility, then it just will automatically pick up uh, these these libraries. Uh, for the most part. So that, that's one of the things that's kind of annoying when libraries do this kind of either git submodule paradigm or directory paradigm is that they don't really make it easy for people that want to kind of parameterize the dependencies. Okay. Um, so now that I explained why uh, the build inputs. So normally we would want the build inputs to have embed TLS uh, listed inside of them, but because they do that directory thing that I mentioned earlier, uh, we really just need to unpack embed TLS to be available when it expects it to. So here I'm just going to do a uh, pre-patch. So there's a patch phase, which is um, pretty much the second thing to happen. So there's a unpack phase, uh, and then that that will take the source, uh, unpack it into the the build directory, and then it will change into the source directory there. But after unpack phase is done executing, it will go into the patch phase, and so then pre patch is just a little build hook, uh, which will run before the patch phase. But here we just kind of want to uh, make that assumption true, so. We can add a note to uh, unpack embed TLS into the directory, which CMake expects. So in this pre-patch, we can apply the logic that they had. If I remember where it was. So they have it at the current lister dependencies embed to list. Um, and I th think, do we need to copy it? I think we'll need to copy it because if I remember correctly inside of this directory, they already have the dependencies there. Oh, okay. So we could just link to it. So I'm picturing, okay. So what we really could do is we could just do a symbolic link to that embed TLS, um, which does exist into the directory which they expect. And that should work, I believe. Okay. Uh, no such directory. Interesting. Uh, one thing that I can do too is the build source. That should be fine. Uh, 
Oh, right. Yes. Okay. So the issue here is that they have that directory one level down, right? So I assumed that I was at this directory level, but I really want to be inside of this directory. So this actually doesn't matter um, being at this level since this is mostly just documentation uh, interfacing into the directory. All that we really want to do is just change into this directory at the very beginning. So let's go back here. Okay, and that might be it, include. And that was it, okay, so interesting. Um, that's, yeah, so we were able to, <laughs> um, with the with the one exception of that oddity about unpacking embed to less, uh, and having it available, uh, this was relatively painless. Yeah, and that's that's mostly it. Uh, CMake, the shell hooks kind of speak for themselves. Um, there are a bunch of ways to configure how CMake runs. By default, uh, the CMake uh, shell hook is also going to be doing that uh, making of the CMake directory or make dir build uh, cd build CMake dot dot dot. Um, there are some ways to kind of configure that if that doesn't match the CMake paradigm. But in the end, uh, that's generally the best practice for most CMake libraries, and that's what they kind of assume. So, anyway. Okay. Um, that's mostly it. Okay. <laughs> that ended quite quickly. But yeah, um, that's, that's how you leverage CMake inside of Nix. And if you have any more questions, just leave them down in the comments. Thank you for checking this out, and hope you have a great day. Bye.